Have you ever wondered what electricians carry in their tool bag? I'm going to show you what I carry on a day-to-day -day basis and the essential tools that every electrician needs. So starting with the front of the bag, which has many compartments on here. The bigger pockets, I try and keep all my similar tools all mixed up together. With the bigger pockets at the back here, I have my wire strippers. These are a very generic set. I get through maybe a couple of pairs a year because I drop them off my ladders for starters, or they just fail because they get so much use. But these are great. I always come back and buy more of these. My heavy duty pliers are my big crimped ones. These have seen some action, as you can see, just by the color of them. Um, they're quite old. These are my old snips, but I keep them because they're handy. Um, they've had a few chips taken out of them over the years, um, so I don't mind using them for things that I'm not sure about or if I've got to cut, some, cut through something that's a little bit on the tough side, because these are already knackered. It doesn't matter if I knacker them anymore. On the other side, I've got my proper snips. These are my wire snips. Now these things are great. They'll cut anything up to six mil quite easily. Um, they will do 10 mil, but you have to do it in chunks. But these also are spring loaded. So if you're doing repetitive work, like changing a consumer unit, for example, just flip the spring over and it automatically springs back open for you. Very useful tool to have. My big wire snips. These for a uh, much bigger cable, it will go straight through 10mm for example, uh, very good for doing meter cables uh, and for stripping the insulation on 16 or 25mm. Trusty utility knife blade, otherwise known as a Stanley blade, very useful thing to have. In fact everything in this bag is pretty much very useful otherwise I wouldn't be carrying it. In the centre pocket here, the marksman. If you haven't come across these, I recommend you go out and look for them. It's basically a chalk loaded air canister. Uh, if you've got holes that you can't reach with a pencil or a pen, um, or even if you can, um, you literally turn it round, push it in, it shoots a um, little dot of green chalk out. You take off your unit that you're doing and the holes are all there marked for you. Tiny level. Fantastic for sockets, back boxes. Super glue, just in case. Pack of fuses, just because quite often you come across something that's got a 13 amp fuse in it that shouldn't have a 13 amp fuse in it. The multi key. Uh, this one is great because it has the gas and electricity boxes on it, uh, the keys for them. Obviously we need to check the meters, if you need to turn off the main isolator switch, check what the earthing supply is. Along the bottom row here uh, is my multi-tool um, screwdriver. It's various different attachments all in the back, so I can just grab whatever I need, drop it in the end. Sometimes very useful because I can just put that one screwdriver in my belt and I've got all the tools I need with it. It's also magnetic. Every electrician needs their bodget screwdriver. I've had this for so many years I can't remember. As you can see the end's been chewed off uh, because I've been using it for things that a screwdriver shouldn't be used for. But that's why I have it in my bag. It's very old, um, it's knackered, uh, sometimes it gets used as a chisel. Um, it's just very useful, handy to have. My spare fault stick. I've always got one of these in my pocket, um, but on the odd occasion I leave it at home or I break it or it's in the van or goes missing because of very weird things do fall out of your pocket. Always got the spare one in my tool bag when I need it. Long nose pliers. And probably my most used set of pliers are my bent nose ones. Very, very handy. Uh, for when you need that small child's finger, for example, or in those hard to reach places that you just can't get to. 
I have two sets of spanners. Very dinky pair. And just a normal set. Uh, the dinky one doesn't come out very often, but is very useful for those times where, well, you need it really. It's very narrow, which is good for this one. This one's great because it's got a 10mm spanner slot, uh, nut slot, sorry, in the back, and uh, it goes up to about 20mm, so good for most, most applications. A range of punches. Now, I use these for various different things. They've all seen better days, as you can see, because they get used a lot. As you can see, the handle snapped off of this one. This is about 5mm. So if I need to push up into a ceiling uh, just to put a wall plug, it saves me having to get my drill out to do it. The others, this is what I call my pokey. Very, very thin. If I'm doing, say for example, down lights in the ceiling and I'd need to do um, test holes, um, same with dry liner walls for double sockets, etc. That's what I use. Great for finding studs. And uh, if you hit a stud, I've only got a tiny hole that I need to patch up with some filler. Larger punches in today's fuse boxes, all being metal, having knockouts on them, very, very useful for punching them out. And last but not least, just a cheap pair of scissors. Uh, again, for fuse boxes, um, very handy for cutting labels. Moving on to the side pockets. The trusty tape measure. Every electrician needs one of these. More so, I always carry a dust mask. Um, you don't know when you're going to need it, um, but it's always good to have it in your bag because if you end up in a rough space just to check something out, you don't want the fiberglass getting into your lungs. Um, or if you've got to get into a crawl space and uh, you suddenly discover that it's very dusty, as most of them are, um, it's, it's just a very good, safe thing to have in your bag at all times. Whether you have one of these or whether you have one of the normal paper ones, I definitely recommend having one. And my dinky little laser measure. Um, great for measuring rooms very quickly, uh, much quicker than a tape measure. Also, you haven't got the hindrance of skirting boards because you can go wall to wall. On the other pocket, on the other side, this is my miscellaneous pocket. Um, as you see, I've had to patch it up because I tore it. Um, but in here, I have my very ancient but very useful head torch. I have a range of uh, chop blocks, just spare bits of cable. I have my very basic 13 amp plug tester. Um, all I generally use this for is to tell me whether a socket is live or not, um, especially in um, the situation where you're in a customer's house and the fuse box isn't labelled, or it's just labelled socket, rather than sockets upstairs or downstairs, etc. Also, uh, just a few knickknacks in here, um, a couple of rubber grommets, um, a few old Wagos, so if I need to test anything in a hurry, I can just connect the cables together to the continuities. Moving to the main pocket. Now, I might get lost in here because it's very deep and there's a lot of stuff in it. But I generally carry a bunch of connectors. They'll usually vary on what's on offer, to be honest with you. Um, some are more permanent, uh, these are the ideal ones, these are the Wagos. I don't really have a preference for which ones to use, they're all great, to be honest. Now, this is my screwdriver set. Every electrician needs a screwdriver set, whether it's this one, which comes in a fold-out pack, or whether you've got individual ones. This one for me is fantastic because it's all got separate blades, uh, they're all in order, size and type, whether it's a torque or a crosshead or even a flathead, uh, and there's two handles with them, so you don't always have to keep interchanging the blades all the time. It has a normal, what I call the normal small handle. Um, these are so ergonomically 
well designed as well, which is another reason why I love them. And, but it means if I'm climbing up steps or ladders um, or crawling around, it means I haven't got loads of big screwdrivers hanging in my pocket. I can just take a few blades out, which I know I'm going to need, and I can just swap them over, clip them in. Also, they can be used as stubbies or semi stubbies because sometimes that's just too long to get into the area that you're trying to get to. But you can take the handle off, and there you go, you've just lost a good two inches, can make it easier to get in places. Also, with the screwdriver set, it's got a very handy geared system where this one is solid, but if you push the button in the back, it will spin and it will turn the screwdriver blade in here four times for every rotation as opposed to when it's locked, it will just do the one. These are fab, but for a second fix, for example, uh, you can get around and put all your sockets and switches on a lot quicker. But I do recommend not using these on metal or shiny face sockets because just spinning it, just like that, you can drop it. Um, but if you're spinning it, you need two hands on it, which means you can't guide the blade. And if it slips, it will scratch the face plate. Moving on to the next tools, we all need a hammer, we all know what it's for, um, nails etc and lifting floorboards actually I probably lift more floorboards with this hammer than I do with smacking in nails. My trusty level, everybody needs one of these um, for obvious reasons. And along with my level, I have my in-between level, you saw my small one, that's the longer one, and this is the in-between one. Now this one's great, it's got rubber ends on it, um, because I do drop it when I'm up on steps occasionally, but more so, it's got a magnetic base. When installing consumer units, it's just great, you can just clip it on the bottom, it stays stuck where it is, so you can move the box around as you need to to get it in the right position and um, it's not getting in the way with anything within the fuse box um, so you can keep that clip to it and you can mark your holes drilling where you need to with this staying out of the way my pad saw cutting out boxes uh, in dry liner or enlarging holes for down lights One of the best tools, and oddly enough, or not oddly enough, my wife bought me this several years ago and I haven't stopped using it. One of my favourite and easiest and best tools. Level, in the top or on the bottom, depending which way up you've got it. Um, but obviously it's a box sizer. Uh, you've got your double size here, your single box here. Invaluable piece of kit. There are many different versions of this. Uh, some do folding. Um, some will do uh, a one size box, uh, you can get singles on their own, but this one obviously is, is what it is, it's a double and a, and a single. Um, sometimes it can be a bit difficult if you get something really in close to the wall or uh, skirting for example, um, but you can always get one or two sides and then you can just flip it over or you can fill the rest in with your, screw, uh, with your, um, with your metal rule, which incidentally is up there. Tiny hammer. Ever tried to get those cable clips in between joist spaces? Well, that's what I use. The bigger one, can't quite get the swing in sometimes. This one gives you that little bit of extra room, get that little extra hit. In a previous video, you may have seen my SWA cutters. Well, here they are, both in my bag. Um, just floating around in the bottom, but where I need to get to them. Always on hand. And along with those, I carry a couple of short adjustable spanners. Now these go very, very large, uh, up to about 32, I think these go up to 32 millimeters, but these are perfect for armored cable um, glands. The usual uh, PVC tape, an earth, 
brown and a blue. Basically, you don't really need any more than that. Um, no, you don't need any more than that. Carrying all, carrying a spare pack of bits. Now, this was just a cheapie got off uh, from a um, superstore. Um, and as you can tell, I'm already missing a piece. Uh, but it's cheap and cheerful, it can get me out of jail sometimes. Occasionally you just need that odd size or you just need that one little tool that this can help you with. A square, or well, really a carpenter's tool, um, but I do like to get my straight cuts. Just that little bit of pride in your work. On top of that, I've got a couple of crimping tools. Just a generic um, butt crimp tool. Uh, I've used this for uh, extending cables occasionally. Um, not used so much these days, not now that I've come across the, uh, the ideal connectors. And this is for my ferrules. If you're using flexible cable, um, if you're wiring a caravan for example, um, or a shepherd's hut, all of those things should be wired in flexible cable. Um, and now it's recommended uh, by BS7671 that you put a ferrule on the end of all of the flexible cable to stop any burrs. Related to the hammer, because it quite often gets used at the same time, it's my baby crowbar. Great for lifting up floorboards, um, you can get that it's very sharp along the uh, on the edge here, so you can get in between narrower floorboards, just enough to give it a lever that I can get the hammer crow underneath and just lever it up. It's also got a nail remover on the other end. And leading to not least but last, leading on is my very cheap electrical tester. Now this is not calibrated. Um, it is cheap and cheerful. Uh, I only actually use it for testing where well, I'm not sure of something, if I've left my proper QTEC tester in the van, because that can be a bit big and bulky. This one, because it's fairly small, uh, it will do the basics, it will do me a basic continuity, it will tell me if something's live or not, uh, it's just a double check, because sometimes the bolt sticks, they can pick up on static, giving you a false reading that something's live when it's not. This will tell me whether it is live or not. So there we have it. Those are my basic tools that I carry in my electrical tool bag. Do you carry anything different yourself? It would be great to let me know. I've probably got a few things there. In fact, I know for one tool that I'd love to get, which I haven't got around to yet, is a three and a half mil burr uh, for those metal back boxes, because invariably, as we all know, the screws do get stripped at some time. But what do you carry that I don't carry? What have I got that you think is a waste of time? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And uh, until the next time, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and please give me a thumbs up because everyone helps.